Hi there and welcome to the Employment Law Show. I'm John Scholes. He's Lior Sam Firu. Uh, tune in for the next little while. Learn a lot about employment law. It's where you spend about 2,000 hours of your life, eight hours a day. So it's key that you have the information. You want to reach out? 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca. We've got lots of stuff on the show today, including, Lior, human rights violations in the workplace. Not good. We'll cover it. But first, the week that was. How are you, pal? That's right. H human rights violations are not good. Not Anytime, good. Anything that follows the word violation, probably not good. <laughs> Uh, but uh, workplace rights is what we're here to talk about mm -hmm. and, and enforcing those rights and understanding those rights. Half the battle, John, always is understanding what your rights are. And, and that's where most people get it wrong. They don't know what their rights are, they don't understand, or maybe they believe things to be true but that are not in fact true. But you don't have to worry about that anymore because on the show we talk about the actual law, your actual rights in the workplace. That's what we talk about. We inform you and educate you and hopefully give you some, some sense of security and power that now I know. Now I know what my rights are. Now no one's going to take advantage of me because I know what I have to do if I'm ever faced with a situation. So it's a privilege to be able to, to give you that power. And if you do have a question that we don't cover on the show, if you want to know in your specific situation, if you have certain rights, maybe you lost your job and you want to know, wait a second, what am I actually owed? By the way, it's probably a lot more than what you've been offered. Not a problem, not an issue. You can call me, you can email me, we'll talk, we'll give you that contact information throughout the show. But to get us started, week there was, this one really kind of frustrated me, kind of you know, got my, my uh, blood boiling. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman who found himself in a very difficult situation. He was diagnosed with a serious medical condition. He was off for a few weeks and then tried to come back to work. Uh, unfortunately, he had some significant limitations and he asked the company for accommodation. So a company according to what they said yeah we tried but there's really nothing we could do to accommodate you so sorry we can't help you out so what did he do then he applied for for short-term disability he had a plan that he's been paying into all this time through yep. work and short-term disability said no no we think he should be able to work so what happens here number one insurance company says you should be able to work we're not going to pay you employer says we don't have work for you we're not going to pay you and this person is left there, still has to pay his mortgage, still has to pay his bills. No one's paying him. He's about to lose his house, about to declare bankruptcy. Horrible situation. Well, that's nonsense. That's absurd. Let's, let's be very clear. Someone has you to bet. pay him. If he can work, then the company has to make sure that, that they accommodate him. If they legitimately don't have a job for him, it means he cannot work, which means the insurance company has to pay him. One of them must pay him, not both, but one of them must pay him. So either the company is in breach of the Human Rights Code if they're not properly accommodating him, if they're not going as far as they need to to accommodate him, or if they cannot accommodate him because his limitations are too severe, that means he can't work. The insurance company must pay him. Someone here, at least one entity, is completely wrong in breaking the law. And I wanted right. to remind our, our listeners of this. Number one, your employer has to accommodate you if you have a medical condition. We'll talk more about that later on the show when we touch on human rights. But beyond that, if you have an insurance company that won't pay you despite you being unable to work and your doctor supporting you, that is wrong. We can help you either get the insurance company to abide by its obligations to pay you or, or, or to reinstate you if they've cut you off. If that ever happens, either of those situations, human rights violation, or your disability insurer giving you a difficult time, you know what to do, you have to do that, reach out to me. It's actually, it's worth mentioning as well that you guys, you know, your partner, Savannah, who does the Disability Law Show here as well, that you, the firm also covers both because there's a lot of interplay between the two disability and employers, right? Very, very uh, common. So yep. you may have someone that's been cut off disability, even though they're not yet able to go back to work, but the insurance company says, yeah, no, you should be fine. But they can't work. In the meantime, the company says, oh, we understand that you can work. So unless you come back to work, we're going to fire you. And the employee says, wait a second, I can't work. The insurance company cutting me off. My employer is threatening me. So these issues, these yeah. uh, issues come together very often. We can deal with that. Get the company off your back. Get the insurance company to pay what they're supposed to pay you. But it starts by reaching out. 1-855-821-5900 is the number to reach out or employmentlawyer.ca. There you will find uh, episodes of our Employment Law Show on radio. From it, we take phone calls and play them back here. The first call for today is right now. 
My wife works for a company. She's been there for about two years. She does it very well. She's received many emails from the employer to say you're doing a fantastic job, essentially telling her she's got a job for life. I love what you're doing. She's even gotten awards. The employer recently had someone come in. She's an efficiency expert. So today, the entire department, which consists of two people, my wife and her supervisor, were told by the boss, I want to know what you're doing every 15 minutes. Can they do that? It, it sounds very it's absurd. Can, can you, you check imagine? your pulse that often? Yeah, I mean, by, like, by the time you do anything, it's probably going to be more than that. So I, I don't think that's reasonable. And, and I think what the first thing she would want to do here is, number one, tell her employer in, in writing. When I always say tell your employer, I always mean in writing. If it's not in writing, it means you haven't done it. So send an email, tell your employer that, hey, I don't think that's reasonable. It's going to increase my work day so, uh, uh, so much. I'm going to have to work overtime. By the way, when the employer hears overtime, they may back off. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. We don't want you to work overtime. Make sure your employer knows that you don't think it's reasonable. If they still insist on that, I would do that for a little bit of time. Just to, so the employer gets a sense of what you're doing. Maybe do it for you know, a couple of weeks, something like that. And if beyond that, if the company still is insisting you report every 15 minutes, I think it becomes unreasonable. It adds so much more to your day. It, it shows somewhat a lack of respect. You know, if you're working and you have to check in with your boss every 15 minutes, I would actually consider that to be a form of constructive dismissal. You know, they're making your life that much more difficult, your, your working day that much different. So if you've done it for a while and they still are insisting, if they're still uh, not satisfied that you're doing a good job, it may be possible to consider this to be a termination, to consider this to be a constructive dismissal. But it starts by telling your boss, here's why that doesn't make sense. And that's true for any unreasonable demand where your, your boss is making of you. In this case, is to report every 15 minutes. That's silly. But it may be other demands. You know, maybe demands about, uh, you know, the way you do your job, how to do it, the tools to use. If you don't think that makes sense, if you think that's going to make your job more difficult or it's going to prevent you from doing the job that you have in a, in a proper way, tell your employer. Make sure that they know about it. Give them an opportunity to reconsider their position. And after you do that, if they still insist, that may be where the law comes in, comes in. You may be able to treat that as a constructive dismissal. You mentioned, you know, try it out for a, a few weeks or a couple weeks, take it out for a spin, as we like to say on the show. If you find out that this really is cumbersome, I can't deal with this, you can still have say, hey, I was just trying. Yeah. This you, isn't permanent, you right? You can, but again, you can't be doing that for three years right. and then say, I was just trying, <laughs> which is why I said, you know, if you do it for a yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. And by the way, the same thing applies to pretty much any big change that the company imposes, you know, change in duties, even a change in compensation. You can take it, as you say, take it out for a spin, but that's only for a short period mm -hmm. of time. Uh, beyond that, if you say, well, it's now I'm going to try for the next six months, it's probably too late. You would have accepted that new reality. So if you're going to try something out, see how it works, you probably only have a couple of weeks or so before you're deemed to have accepted it. You may uh, recall in past shows and other seasons of the show, we talked about the severance pay calculator. We put that under a spotlight because it was a fantastic tool. Well, it's grown, it's gotten bigger in the form of pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Tell me about it. So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca does everything the severance pay calculator uh, did and much, much more. So first thing, kind of the basic functionality, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca allows you, as I said, to find out how much severance yep. you're actually owed. Maybe you're staring at a severance letter and you want to know if it's legitimate or if it's appropriate. Maybe you're concerned you're about to be let go and you want to know what they, would they have to pay you. Or maybe you're just curious, hey, what would they ever owe me if they let me go? Very simple, take seconds, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, anonymous, uh, easy to use, take seconds and you can get that information. But you can do so much more if you want. If you want to find out if you've been constructively dismissed, again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Same thing if you want to find out if you're really an independent contractor or an employee, go to the same website. If you want to find out if you've been the victim of harassment or a human rights violation or if the company or your insurance company was right to cut you off disability, that and more you can do on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. It's like having your mini employment lawyer with you I like to say you, you already have an employment lawyer. It's right there on your phone in pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Check it out for yourself. Make sure that your rights are enforced and that you know what your rights are. Email address, by the way, is help at employmentlawyer.ca. I want to read Fernando's email and use this through the pocket employment lawyer. Uh, Fernando says, my wife suffers from uh, severe depression, which keeps her from working. When she tried applying for LTD, long-term disability, a few months ago, she was denied due to lack of medical support. Despite being backed by two different doctors, her only option now is to appeal the decision. We love that word. We'll get to that. Uh, 
we're also worried uh, what her employer might do if she doesn't return to work soon. Yeah, yeah. So, it, unfortunately, even though the process of applying and qualifying for disability should be a straightforward one. I can't work, here's what my doctor says. Right. It should be that straightforward. Often it's not. And it's not because the insurance company uh, doesn't want you to be on. I mean, let's face it, they don't want to have to pay you if they can avoid it. Sure. And, and many times, an insurance company may cut someone off before they should be cut off, even though they still cannot work. But that's wrong. And the problem is they tell you, oh, we'll, we'll throw you a lifeline, appeal it. Well, who are you appealing it to? The same people that cut you off. You're appealing it Internal to the exact process. same people that yeah. have already decided yeah. that you shouldn't be on disability. So it's a waste of time. It's just intended to frustrate you. No, if you've been cut off disability, if you're still unable to work and your doctor's backing you up, the only way to deal with that is through the legal mechanism. The good news is it's not a long process. It's not a complicated process. It's one that generally is resolved very, very easily in favor of the employee. If you're not sure what to do, if the insurance company is right, give us a call. Give us the opportunity to help you. And of course, if your employer is now trying to put pressure on you because you've been cut off disability, give us a call. Let us deal with your employer and get them off your back so you can focus on getting better. But we touched on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Yep. One of the features of it is it helps you determine and assess whether you've been properly cut off disability. So if we were to go now to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and plug in the information that you just read about this person being cut off despite doctors saying that they're unable to work, et cetera. So we were to plug that into pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. So you can see that on the screen. Going through that process, which literally takes seconds, we see the conclusion, the result that pocketemploymentlawyer.ca gives you. And I'll read that. It says, don't assume that the insurer is right by denying your claim. Often they are not. If your doctor supports your disability and says that you are unable to work, you are likely owed compensation from your insurance uh, company by law. So it assessed correctly that no, it's not appropriate. Your doctor is supporting you. The insurance company should be paying you. You can check out pocketemploymentlawyer.ca for that and other matters. Check it out. As I said, easy to use and anonymous. Coming up here, human rights violations in the workplace. We will cover that after a, a wee break. You want to reach out, 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. Lots more Employment Law Show is on the way. Be right back. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. Severancepaycalculator.com. You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to the Employment Law Show. I want to cover this one. That is human rights violations in the workplace, right? Big topic. It is a huge topic. It's a topic that, uh, that a lot of employers get wrong, a lot of employees get wrong. But because we're talking human rights, think of that term, human rights. It suggests that these are basic rights, important rights that we all have in, in this society, in Canada. So we want to understand, it, certainly as those relates to the workplace, what yep. your rights are under, under the human rights. So that's exactly what we're here to talk about. Well, we, uh, we hear that term, human rights code. What does it actually do, though? So... The Human Rights Code is a statute that governs human rights, and the Human Rights Code essentially, to put it very simply, protects individuals from being discriminated against. Now, discrimination is something that's defined. It's not, discrimination doesn't mean that you're treated differently than someone else. Discrimination means you're treated differently than someone else because of specific reasons. So if I'm treated differently than you uh, because uh, you have nicer clothes than I do, which you do, by the way, <laughs> that is not human rights because the, okay. the law doesn't protect discrimination based on, on you know, the quality of, of your wardrobe. Uh, on the other hand, if you're treated differently than me because I have a medical condition okay. or because there's an age difference or because of my sexual orientation. That is a human mm. rights issue. So the Human Rights Code protects you in various, uh, various aspects of your job. 
from being discriminated against because of your ethnicity, your, your age, your disability, and a number of other things. And if you are mistreated in any way on that basis, that's a human rights violation, that's illegal, and the company may have to pay significant uh, compensation as a result. Well, yeah, expand on that. Some more common human rights violations in the workplace, I guess, is what we're looking at. Probably one of the most common ones is, uh, is human rights violations arising out of disability. So an employee may have a medical condition and if they're mistreated because of that medical condition or if they're not accommodated as a result of that medical condition that's a human rights violation an employer would have to provide that accommodation maybe that's modified hours or modified duties maybe it's flexibility to work from home so that's one common aspect another one may be age discrimination we have an aging workforce so if your employer mistreats you because of your age again a human rights violation because age discrimination is protected by the human rights code Another big one is family status. We talked about that often on, on the show. So if you have certain financial, uh, sorry, family obligations, uh, child care, maybe parental care, and you need some accommodation from your employer to meet those obligations, maybe you need some flexibility to leave work early so that you can pick up your child. If the company doesn't provide that, that could be a human rights violation because family status is protected under the human rights code. So those are just some examples as to where human rights code may flow into the workplace and protect and give rights to employees. Have you heard the word accommodation several times in there? When is uh, too much too much or is enough is enough as far as the employer is concerned? So one of the main obligations uh, that an employer has under the human rights code is that duty to accommodate. So that applies in a number of situations, uh, you know, religious reasons. We talked about that on a previous show where you may have a, a religious uh, requirement to leave, let's say, work or not to work during the Sabbath or what have you. An employer has to accommodate that. Uh, we talked about that when it comes to medical condition. You have to be provided accommodation, modified hours, etc. And employers often ask, well, wait a second. Okay, we have to accommodate. But what if it's tough? What if it's costly? When is enough enough? Mm -hmm. Well, it's difficult to say, except what I can tell you is that it's difficult to show that you've met that obligation. You have to do it if you're the employer, even if it is difficult, even if it's something that's going to cost you some money. Uh, now, there is a line beyond which, beyond which you don't have to go. We call this accommodation to the point of undue hardship. So hardship is okay. You have to do it even if it's hard. If it becomes too difficult, too costly, then you may not have to do it. And in my experience, John, I see this all the time, companies often refuse to accommodate or they say it's too much when it's really not too much, when they don't meet that level of undue hardship. Uh, that's especially true with the big companies. I was going to say the threshold must be higher for like a multinational rather than a mom and pop shop. If you're working for a huge organization with many employees and a lot of resources, it's going to be difficult for them to say, oh gosh, that's just too difficult to do. On the other hand, if you're working for a mom and pop shop and you're one of two employees, that employer may not be able to provide as much accommodation. There's just don't, not as many opportunities or resources available. So it does vary. You know, banks, for example, huge employer, they have a duty to accommodate and it's it's going to be very difficult, for example, for a bank to say, oh gosh, no, no, it's too much. So duty to accommodate is very strict. If you're not sure your employer's accommodated you or if they mistreated you or discriminated against you in some way, you got to reach out. Talking about human rights violations in the workplace, where does harassment fit into this one? So we, we know about harassment and employees often assume that if you're being harassed, that's a human rights issue. Not necessarily. Uh, harassment becomes a human rights issue if it's based on one of those prohibited grounds. So if you're being harassed because you're a woman or because you're taking maternity leave or because of your age or your disability, then we call that discriminatory harassment. That's a human rights violation. Don't get me wrong, harassment in any form is not legal and it may lead to a constructive dismissal. Right. But it's a human rights violation if it's discriminatory harassment. It makes the harassment that much worse. And if you're being harassed, oh, sexual orientation, a, a big one. You're, you're being put down, you're being mistreated, uh, you're not being considered for a promotion because of that. That's a human rights violation that can lead to a significant compensation that's not acceptable here. So there's obviously an interaction between harassment and human rights violations. Now, if I'm an employee and I've been listening to this for the last 10 minutes and I feel like my human rights are being violated, what do I do? What's my next step? So number one is I, I'd like to see the employee address that with their employer as much as possible. Okay, I'd like the employee to, to raise the concerns with their employers and, and, and even say, I'm concerned here that I'm being mistreated or discriminated against. Give the company the opportunity to, to fix the problem and maybe appreciate what they're actually doing. 
if that's not a possibility or if the company still continues in the course of discrimination or in their failure to accommodate, you got to get legal advice at that point. Yeah. Okay, what I don't want people to do is just to quit their job and walk away from their entitlements or to go off on a medical leave in the situation where you know, the stress is getting too much. Reach out to me. Let's talk about that. Let me help you enforce those rights. Let me help you understand what those rights are. And by the way, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca also has a feature that allows you to determine if you've been the victim of a human rights violation. John, human rights laws are important. They're, 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 we call them quasi-constitutional. In other words, they're almost as important as the Constitution. Hmm. They cannot be violated. They have to be enforced if you're not sure what to do or if your rights have been enforced or, or violated. Give me a call. Reaching out is easy. As we always say, 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca or help at employmentlawyer.ca. Go to the website, find a radio show where you can catch our weekly show. We uh, take phone calls from it, as you know by now. We'll get to phone call number two right now. I was hired to work for a company uh, temporarily at the beginning, and then I was hired full-time. And uh, after uh, all total about a year and three months, I've been offered to stay home for a bit until work comes or take a layoff. And I chose a layoff to look for another job, and uh, the only thing I got paid is my vacation pay, and I just wondered what I was supposed to get paid more. <sighs> took the layoff. The, the, the temporary layoff. Well, l let's start with the idea that uh, a temporary layoff is not something that an employer can impose. And, and our regular viewers know this, that a temporary layoff is a termination. In other words, an, an employer cannot actually lay you off temporarily. It gives you, the employee, the right to treat that as a termination and get your severance. So there's no automatic right. So in terms of accepting the layoff, it's not something you can actually accept unless you go back to work. So you've only accepted a temporary layoff if you sat at home, wait, for the company to call you back, and when they called you back, then you went back to work. Mm -hmm. Then you would have accepted it, and the problem that, with that is, number one, you're not gonna get any compensation, but the other problem, maybe even a bigger problem, is now you've given them the right to do it again. Not a good idea. So a company doesn't have a right to do it unless you give them the right, and then they can do it again and again. So this person can and may still be able to treat this temporary layoff as a termination and say, sorry, employer, I'm going to treat this as a termination and make you pay me my severance. So let's go back to our good friend, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, and let's find out how much this person would actually be owed if he mm -hmm. chose to treat his temporary layoff as a termination. So let's say this individual is in a sales role. We can see that on the screen right now. We know that he's been there for a year. I picked an age, 44 sounds like a good age. So we can see right on the screen based on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca that he'd be owed anywhere from three to five months pay. That's significant. And by the way, John, some may look at it and say, he only said he worked for a right, year. Doesn't right. he get a week's pay? No, no. He gets three to five months' pay. That's why it's so important to go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca because in almost every situation, I guarantee it, the laws, the, the laws that we have provide for more severance, more compensation than you realize and let's get rid of this idea of a week's pay or two weeks pay per year of service. That's nonsense. All right, coming up here after break, termination rights for subcontractors. We'll get to that in the meantime. 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. It's Employment Law Show. Stick around. More to come. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with The Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors. They've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated. But there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with The Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to Employment Law Show. John Scholes, Lior Sam Fear. We like to get the phone calls on the show. Where do we get them? We get them from the radio show. And you can catch those shows, past ones, current ones, employmentlawyer.ca. Let's get to that call. Number three is right now. 
I was a subcontractor for 11 years, a heating contractor. They didn't take taxes off our check, but uh, they did supply us with parts. They supplied okay. us with our work. And one day I was fired out of the blue with no reason really given to me whatsoever. I didn't receive any severances. At the same time, three or four other guys were fired. They did get uh, severed. How old are you? I'm uh, 35. I was on about uh, 80 grand a year. John, if this guy is not misclassified, time. then I, I don't know who yeah, is. So he's worked point. there for 11 years. He's making $80,000. They give him the jobs. They give him the tools. Could he be more of an employee if he tried? Except the company says, we're smart. We know what to do. Let's call him an independent contractor. Guess what? We'll save a bunch of money. We don't have to worry about payroll and, and taxes and all that. Not it does not work that way. He is an employee. He looks like an employee. He acts like an employee. He is an employee. It doesn't matter what he signed. Misclassified. And you may be in the same situation. You're watching us right now and saying, wait a second, are you telling me that for the past seven years I've really been an employee? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You probably are. And if you're not sure, you go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to find out or you call me. But this person said they've been let go. So what does that mean? Uh, they can be let go. An employer mm -hmm. is allowed to let yep. them go. But remember what I said. He's an employee. So he has to get paid severance like an employee. And my assessment of him would be right around a year's pay. Well, let's see if I'm right. Let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and see what the result is for this person. So we see it on the screen. He's a contractor, heating contractor, uh, 11 years of service, 35. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know he's making $80,000 a year. Well, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca correctly assesses him as being owed somewhere between 9 to 12 months pay. And actually, that's conservative. It's probably closer to 12 months pay. But that's what it is. And at his compensation level, that's anywhere from sixty to $80,000. So his employer may think, well, he's a contractor. We can let him go without any compensation. No. Not the case. Not even close. Remember, you may be in that same situation. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca or, or give me a call. Another place to ask questions is terminationquestions.com. We'll get to one of those to wrap up the show today. Sandra says, uh, I was fired 18 months ago after working 20 dedicated years at the company. I was given one week per year worked, plus an extra five weeks as a retirement bonus. Uh, I've always wondered if I was owed a bit more than that. What do you think? Yeah, what I think, unfortunately, is that, of course, you're owed significantly more than that. And, you know, here's the problem. The problem is that they gave her something and apparently she signed it. Assuming she signed it, she now is in a situation where she can't go do anything about it. And yeah. after 20 years of service, depending on her age and, and specific uh, position, she probably would have been owed anywhere from 18 to 24 months pay. And if they gave her, I don't know, 23 weeks pay or something like that, that's less than six months. That's less than a third of what she's actually Ouch. owed, John. So and it breaks my heart because I get often emails or calls like that, people that have either accepted their package they've signed off on it or it happened more than two years ago mm -hmm. and now it's too late to do anything about yep. it so that's why we're trying to kind of get in front of you here to tell you don't let that happen to you don't be unfortunate like sandra in this situation where i have to tell her yes you would have been owed another year's pay but now you can't do anything about it can you imagine john if someone told you yeah yeah of course you were legally owed another year's pay but because you signed something, now you've lost on $100,000. That's a terrible situation to be in. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let your friends be in that situation. If they're let go, don't let them accept it. Don't let that, them sign that severance offer, regardless of any deadline. And by the way, they all contain deadlines. It's a ignore pressure it. tactic. Ignore it. I'm yeah. telling you right here on the air, ignore it. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, speak with me, email me. Yeah. We make it as easy as possible for you to get the information, to enforce your rights. No excuse not to do it. Thanks, Sandra. Appreciate that. Again, terminationquestions.com is where she went. You can use that as well. Ask your questions. They will get answered either here or at the office with Lior, a member of his team. We're done for the, uh, for the day. You want to reach out? 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca. That is the email address we use. Simply employmentlawyer.ca. There you can catch our radio show, which has been going on for years and years and years. Uh, please join us for that as well. And finally, pocket employmentlawyer.ca. It is like having an employment lawyer right in your pocket. <laughs> Make sure you use that any time. We'll catch you again right here on the Employment Law Show. Appreciate it. See you next time. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.